everyone, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Wednesday. It is November 9th. The year is 2022, and we are streaming live right here on YouTube. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. It's a privilege to have you joining me. And if you are returning, I'm thrilled that you've come back. Boy, do I have a card for you tonight. It's a simple, simple fun fold, but it's going to use vellum, gold foil, and I'm going to teach you an amazing technique called kissing. I know, kissing. We're going to take two stamps, put them together, and get a whole new impression. I'm going to throw in some glimmer paper and tons of tips for you tonight on all these techniques. Now, a couple things before we get started. You're going to want to make sure you stick around when the live chat is over. Because down in the video description below, I will have linked for you a free project sheet. That project sheet is going to contain pictures, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies for the card I'm going to demonstrate for you tonight. And if that's not enough, I'm going to have six additional samples I'm going to share with you during tonight's live stream. They're going to be part of this month's online card class that began today. Now, we also would love to chat with you. So whether you are here watching the replay or perhaps you are live, YouTube does require that you log in using your Gmail address in order to chat or leave a comment, but please do so because I come back and I read every single one. And then finally, I want to introduce you to Gina curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name in blue off to the side, and you might recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio, but best of all, She's been stamping the entire 29 years that she's been alive. She's had no choice. And she's an avid stamper, and she is more than capable of answering your questions and providing you links during tonight's live chat because I can't keep up with all the questions. So she does a great job of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn us right down to the stamp table so we can get started. All right, let's move those fancy buttons out of the way, and we've got our work surface here. We're going to work from the bottom up on this project tonight. A little bit different than what we typically do because we usually do some cutting and scoring. But I've got lots of fun things for you tonight. I am going to actually mix and match cardstock tonight. Not normally something that I do, but it worked so beautifully on this card with this technique. So my card base is Starry Sky, and I am going to add some vellum to it. Now, the Snowflake Specialty Vellum Paper is absolutely gorgeous. I wish you were here. It's flocked, which means it's raised. Now, there are several different designs in the package, and actually some of them are iridescent foil. Absolutely stunning. Don't miss that. You can find those pictures in my online store. Now, since I want to add this in a layer to this, I found the best way to play up that white was to add a layer of white cardstock behind it. Now, you may know if you are a card maker that virtually no adhesives are invisible behind vellum, right? So I'm going to give you a couple tips tonight about using vellum that are going to make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to start by flipping this over here in my silicone craft sheet. Love that product because liquid glue, adhesive, and hot glue will not stick to it. That means it's going to keep my work surface sticky free. Now typically you would use your liquid glue and I don't love the fact that sometimes this tip is too big for those little tiny spaces. So let me show you what I did. I actually took that glue and I squeezed it inside a precision tip glue applicator. Now, so many of you have fallen in love with this product that I have it linked for you on my website. Head over to lisastampstudio.com, click on shop and craft room favorites. Now, the little rubber band was a tip from a YouTube viewer, so thank you very much. I love the tips you guys share with me, and that's going to keep that little silicone cap wrangled down. That needle tip is the best thing. You are going to love this. I shake the glue down because it is rather thick and we're going to get it started here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of place it in little outside areas behind the flocking that you're not going to see. Now, the best thing about this glue that I can tell you is it's strong. It dries fairly quickly. And because of the strength, you don't need to put it everywhere. So you're going to put it in areas that you're not going to see. And you're going to work primarily near the border because remember, this is a layer. I'm going to tack down some of the extra center areas just because we don't want those to lift while we add our second layer on the top, which is going to be that extra fun fold lift here. So I'm just working there around the edges, small little tiny drops, and I'm going to put this on here so you can see it a little bit better. I don't do anything straight. So for me to have a contrasting color underneath me is going to make my card making a whole lot easier. So I'm looking to align the top the bottom and the sides, and that liquid glue gives you a little bit of shimmy room, and we're going to press. 
Now I like to turn it upside down and press from the back to create the contact between the vellum and the actual cardstock, but oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, we're gonna come back to this in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and push that off to the side. But now I decided I wanted to play up a little bit of gold because you know, we're gonna make a Christmas card out of this one. Now I know that's kind of blinding here on the live stream. We'll apologize for that. That's because of the lighting. And I'm gonna use my Stamp and Seal Plus here on the back. This is a very, very strong adhesive. It comes out in small tabs. It is my favorite and I love the strength of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay this here. But you know what, because I don't do many things straight, I find I have better luck if I turn this horizontally, which will allow me to kind of hover over this to try to get an equal perimeter all the way around. Once I have it where I want it, we're gonna go ahead and tack that in place. And I never run my hand over the front because I either have ink on it or in this case, I don't want to remove that flocking. So I'm just going to press from the back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more adhesive here. Nice and simple so far, right? But we're going to add a little bit more vellum and wait till you see the technique I'm going to be teaching you. Make sure you stick around too because you're not going to want to miss those extra six cards that I have to share with you. Also, as a reminder, there is going to be a live Q&A tonight when the demonstration is all over. So make sure you get those questions all ready and we'll do that at the end of the live stream. Okay, base, all done. We're going to put that off to the side. The next thing we're going to do, and this is what we're going to build upon, is the little card that's actually going to be part of that base we just created. Now hang with me. You might be thinking, no way. It's going to work great. This is two and three quarters by eight. I scored it at four inches. Remember, all the cutting dimensions for everything, including your layers, are gonna be in that free project sheet so you can recreate this at home. I have another piece of vellum. Yeah, this is from that exact same package. Isn't it beautiful? The choices are amazing. Looks like snowfall. So once again, you're looking to use that precision tip glue applicator near those outside little dots just to kind of tack this down. I will do a couple in the center as well because I want to make sure it doesn't lift, obviously, because we're going to add some pretty stuff right there. And that's where we're going to actually place the technique is on the front panel of this card. So I'm working near the outside edges just to make sure that this is secure. We don't want this to lift while it's coming in and out of the envelope. Again, I don't do things straight, so I'm going to turn it sideways. That's going to give me an opportunity to mimic the top, bottom, and sides once again to try to get an even amount of coverage. We're going to flip that upside down and rub from the back. Okay, we're going to come back to that liquid glue and that silicone craft sheet, but I'm going to move those off to the side. This is where we are going to do some building. So let's bring in some basic white cardstock so that we can do some stamping. And this is where I want to teach you the technique. I am going to use the coordinating ink to that cardstock base. Remember I said it was Starry Sky. This is one of the best things about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink is going to match the cardstock that's going to match our markers and our accessories and our designer series papers and so on. No guesswork. But I do want to point this out to you. This is a different color. Yes, this is actually Orchid Oasis. But the two of these work so pretty together, don't they? And wait till you see how this comes together. So I'm going to start with... Orchid Oasis in this case. Now we're going to use the Starry Sky as well, and we're going to incorporate some techniques along the way. So let's go ahead and let's open this up, and I'm going to need to bring in my grid paper here because I'm going to do a little bit of stamping off for this technique. Now I am using a house image, and do you notice how it's solid? You might also notice that it looks kind of pink. Okay, let me just talk to you about that. This is a photopolymer stamp set. Photopolymer is clear. But when you use highly pigmented colors, it has a habit of picking up the pigmentation and staining the photopolymer in no way, shape, or form does that hurt your stamp. In fact, you can see that it's clean. There's absolutely no concern about transferring any residue. Just clean your stamp. So the stamp set is called Sweet Gingerbread, and it has coordinating gingerbread house dyes. But wait until you see those other samples I'm going to share with you, because you might look at this and think, Gingerbread houses. Mm -mm. Wait till I see the other ones. They're really fun. So the technique involves another stamp. So we're going to have to have that ready. So I pulled out from another stamp set a little cluster of snowflakes here. Okay, I'm going to put that off to the side and let me show you where that came from. I just hijacked it from another stamp set that I had and that's just another great way for you to expound on the purchases you already own. So this is Christmas Scotty. There's the snowflakes I took it from. Another great stamp set. This actually has a coordinating punch to it. So I'm going to use this 
by itself. Let's go ahead and let's teach you how to do that. We are going to ink this up, and this is in the Orchid Oasis. Now you can tell this is a deeply pigmented color, very, very pretty, but it's gonna to be too dark for when I want. So I'm gonna stamp off one layer of ink. I'm leaving it face up on my work surface, taking a clean stamp, and we are going to press and lift. But we wanna press off all that excess ink on that scratch paper because we don't wanna transfer it back to this wet image. Now you cannot see what's happening, but if you were here in person, you would be able to see it. If you think it's dried, huff on it with your breath, give it a nice, firm, even pressure. Can you see it through the camera? Maybe not because of the glare. Let me show you. What has happened now is those snowflakes have actually transferred to the solid image. So this is called the kissing technique, which means we use another stamp to create a custom pattern on a solid stamp. Lots of fun, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna take this off camera and just give that a quick clean on my stamp and scrub. This of course has residual ink on it, so you're gonna to wanna to clean that off as well. Now, I wanna to talk to you about a couple other features about the stamp set that I find really fun. Now, one of them is the outline image for the window and the doors. And for this, I'm gonna use the starry sky. Because these two colors work so beautifully together, I can mix and match without it clashing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this up and we are going to ink up those little frames. Now, photopolymer is gonna make it a lot easier for you to line things up. Now, if I get my head in the camera view, you're gonna to have to apologize, uh, accept my apology, because you know, when you get to be over 60, you need to be closer, right? The other thing is we're gonna need a roof for this. And guess what? Those dies are gonna come in really handy because there is a die for everything. And we'll stamp that here. Now I have a little tip for you. It didn't happen on this one, but it happened on the one earlier today. Have you ever stamped a solid image and you have like a little skip, like a little white dot or something that just came out of nowhere? And it's so frustrating, but guess what? There's a way to fix it without restamping it. You're gonna use the light alcohol-based Stampin' Blends marker that coordinates with the ink. When you do, you're gonna use that chisel tip and you're just gonna make a little dot to fill that area. And as that alcohol base evaporates, what's going to happen is it's going to match perfectly to the ink and you can't tell. It's a great trick to fix those little boo-boos because we all have that. All right, I'm gonna push that off to the side. The next thing is we need to add doors and windows. And although they are photopolymer stamps, let me show you, I'm gonna pull it up here. I struggled with getting it perfect when I used a darker ink because that darker ink is going to shade the stamp. So let's break out my favorite stamp positioning tool. So I've got the Stamp Erratus stamp positioning tool. I am going to tell you right now, I forgot to link it in your project sheet. Forgive me, forgive me. You can find it in my online store. It's called the Stamp Erratus. It's got a real fun name, doesn't it? All right, so there's a magnet here. There's actually two that come with it. I only need one, they're super duper strong. You don't want the magnets to come in contact with each other because they will snap, they'll catch your fingers and they can break. But I like to cover this with one of those small grid sheets that we just used here. That kind of protects that work surface. And I'm gonna line up my paper here in the corner and I'm gonna use that magnet here. And I'm gonna take my image and I'm gonna line it up because right now while it's clear, I have a lot better shot at getting it nice and straight inside of there. I'm gonna close that hinge and press, and it's going to lift up the image. Now, you can see the reflection from the camera, and I do apologize that that's from the lighting. But do you notice how it has a slight slant to it because of the hinge? Take your stamp set, stick it up underneath it. Now you've got a nice even playing field here. Take your ink pad and you're gonna lightly tap. Remember, this is a small stamp. And then what we are gonna do is we are going to press and stamp. And I'm gonna hope, uh, it's not perfect because you're all watching me and I wanna get my head in the camera. But the stamp apparatus is gonna make it just fantastically easy for you. Now we're gonna to need to clean this before we pull it off. And I wanna to talk to you about this. This is actually the Simply Chamois. So it's an actual chamois. Some of you may use them to wash dishes or cars with. And I cut it in half and I put it in one of the stamp cases. Now this is a sign of a well-loved chamois because they do become stained, but it's nice and clean. And I'm able to use that smaller piece to clean off that stamp and peel it off so I don't get all blue fingers. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this one more time. I'm gonna line up my door here. And again, I'm doing my best to keep my head out of your camera view. 
You know, when you're over 60 and you stamp, you get really close with your head. Anybody else with me? <laughs> and then we're going to press and we're going to lift. Same exact thing. I'm going to ink this up just by tamping it. And then we are going to press and put that right inside of here. The great thing, look at, do you see how I missed a little spot? Guess what? Because it's lined up, we can ink that again and we can go back over it, make it darker and fill it in. Isn't that wonderful? I love this, especially when I'm doing multiples of the exact same card. That's going to make life a whole lot easier for me. I'm going to go ahead and close this up for right now, remove that piece. I'm going to take the Stamparatus out of the way and push that just off camera. While I know this one isn't perfect because I got my windows just a little off center, and that's because I couldn't get my head close enough. I do want to talk to you about this. I live in Florida, so it's humid here most of the time. So this is going to keep my chamois damp for a long period of time. I find literally about a week or two before I even have to get them wet again, depending on your climate. But it's a great way to store it. And it's also a great way to transport it when you're going to stamp with others. All right, so let's talk about some more imagery here. So I've got my house. I've got my roof. I decided I needed some trees. Now for this one, I am actually going to bring in some additional products because I want to do a little bit of heat embossing. So let me move these other ones quickly out of the way to make a little bit more room here. And for heat embossing, we are going to use Versamark ink. Now in my original sample that's going to be in your project sheet, I actually did the frame of the window and the doors in embossing. But I did this one different because I wanted you to be able to see the difference so that you can choose which one you like better. I want to play up that gold. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to use the Versamark and the tree image from that stamp set. And we are going to do some embossing in gold. Now I want to get everything ready. And so I have it here. First, I have the embossing buddy. I have the reverse tweezers and I have the little tray. These are all part of the embossing tool additions kit. Cannot live without these personally. You're going to see how well they come together to use your projects. So I'm going to place those here. I use a plastic spoon because once it gets yucky or it breaks, I can throw it away. I do a lot of heat embossing. So I actually keep my embossing powder in a snappable plastic container. I have these linked for you too in my craft room favorites. I make sure everything is ready to go. That spoon is going to allow me to keep my fingers clean and keep them off my project. So I'm going to slide this off to the side for just a minute. And let's come back over to here. I am going to powder this. By running the embossing buddy on the cardstock, what it's going to do is it's going to prepare the surface. It's going to tell the, the powder not to stick where there isn't ink. I know, it doesn't seem like that's possible, but it works really good. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Versamark ink. I've got my tree, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink that up. And I've got one, two, I'm going to leave space between them because there's dies for these. And I think I ran out of room, but I'm going to put another one down here. I may not have put the embossing buddy on there. And we're going to run this right over here. Now I'm going to turn this to make it easier for my hand. And we're going to pour that powder generously over those images. Do you see how well that tray works to my advantage? And then I'm going to take that spoon and I'm going to give that a little bit of a tip. The reason is when you flick it, it's going to repel the excess. But look how wonderful that embossing buddy has done by eliminating the flex of the gold powder where you don't want it. It's a deal breaker. Important tip. If you are new to heat embossing, you want to cover your embossing powder before we bring in the heat tool because you're going to have a huge mess. Ask me how I know. Now I'm going to talk to you about that little Swiffer cloth in just a minute. But this is where my reverse tweezers come into play, especially when I'm working with a smaller piece of paper. Now I've got my heat tool here. This is the Stampin' Up! heat tool. I love it because it has two speeds. So there's a one and a two. I use the one for techniques and I use the two for heat embossing the powder. What you want to do is you want to take this powdery finish and turn it to a beautiful foil raised image. And that's what embossing powder does. There's a retractable stand, which is great when you're traveling in case tip, which means it's going to stay hot, which means if you're doing multiples of these, it's going to be super duper easy. Now I'm going to turn this on. Very important. You don't cover the vents. You're still going to be able to hear me, but it's going to be louder. Once the gun gets hot, this is going to be lickety split. The tweezers are going to keep my fingers from getting burnt. They're going to work closely and keep the gun moving. I like to work in one area at a time. 
that's going to ensure that I don't miss a spot. So I'm going to go over that with the heat tool. You're going to see, you see how that powder is turning to that shiny embossed foil finish? All right, and then as you can see, the gun now is hot. So it's just going to go faster and faster the longer the gun is on. So I'm going to do one, there's two, and then here's our third one. Really, really stunning. That's going to bring so much emphasis to that gold foil. It's going to lay all that beautiful sparkle to this holiday card. Okay, so let me set that off to the side. And like I said to you before, the beauty is, is that there are dies for everything. Now, you might be looking at these little pieces thinking, oh goodness gracious, how in the world? So I'm going to give you another tip. There's a die for the house. There's a die for the roof. There's a dies for the tree. Now, this is what I love about Stampin' Up. They know intuitively that you may want more than one tree. They also know that you may want more than one door. So they give you multiples of specific dies that might be most popular. And I love that. By the way, if you're loving this, that's because it's magnetic, which means I am not going to lose all those little tiny dies when I go over to my die cutting machine. This is my craft room favorites for you as well. So let me show you what I do. I don't want to line them up and then all slip and then have to do the work over again. So I'm using the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. I cannot live without this. Many of you have thanked me for it. Again, it's linked in my craft room favorites. So I'm going to pull off a little bit. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm lining up the die exactly where I want it and I'm taping down the die to the paper. Now I'm just going to simulate this for you because I do already have some die cut just to save a little time tonight because I want to share those other six cards with you. Lining it up across the die and the paper. That's going to secure this in place so that when you die cut this now, everything is going to come out perfect. The great news is, is once it's die cut, even though this has gone through the compression of the rollers, you can reuse this at least a half a dozen times. This is the exact same roll of post-it labeling and cover-up tape that I bought two years ago. This is a fantastic product. You'll really, really enjoy that. Now, I do have those pieces already finished, and those are here. So I have my house and my roof. Do you notice? This one I heat embossed the gold. I have one finished that's not, and then I have one, two, and three trees. But there's also another die in this die set, actually two, that I want to point out. This one creates a snowbank. Now, I cut that ahead of time, and I cut it the length of the card. This one, look. This creates a very detailed and beautiful fence, but I want to share that with you in just a few minutes because not only does this die gorgeous, I mean, it's effortless. You're going to be able to see the little emphasis I brought to this card using glimmer paper. All right, so let's start by putting these together. I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet once again. I'm going to push those pieces up to the top of your camera view. We're going to start with the snowbank. Now, whether you like adhesive or liquid glue is entirely up to you, but my important tip is you're not going to want anything here near the top because we're going to do some tucking. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to use a little bit of adhesive tonight. You would probably want to use a little bit of liquid glue just so that you can shimmy it a little bit. So I'm going to put some here and some here. And again, this comes out in little tabs, which makes it super easy for me. And so that you can see a little bit better, I'll leave that silicone craft sheet underneath it. I am going to line up the bottom and the sides to adhere that snowbank. Remember that top area there is open. So here comes our house. Isn't that amazing what that kissing technique does? Then these are embossed and of course stamped. This is going to go behind here. So the house is the next thing you're going to adhere. For this, I'm going to use adhesive. I am not going to place any at the bottom just to make my life easier so that we can tuck this in without it snagging and I'm looking to put it center. Now, depending on where you live, you might be Chicago, you might be, you know, <laughs> light snow area, just somewhere similar in Colorado on a less snowy season. So you can determine the depth of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that here. And let's talk about the roof. Now, Stampin' Up! gave you a roof line here for a reason, because that's gonna make it super easy, but you might be looking at this going, well, how are we gonna do that? I did not want to use liquid glue because I wanted my roof elevated to give this a 3D look. So here is where my mini dimensionals come into play. They are already die cut with the mini dimensionals, but if you look closely here, you're going to see that the outside border is not die cut. Don't throw these away. These are amazing. 
I've got a pair of scissors here in the studio that I dedicate to sticky things. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those up. That's what the ribbon's for. And then I'm gonna cut this in half, okay? And then we're gonna take off the paper backing, which is on one side of this. And then I am going to lay this right here, near the edge, but not so it's gonna be visible. And then here's the other one. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. The reason I love these edges, nice and straight, and it's gonna be even leverage. I don't have to worry about putting too many dimensionals on. Now what we're gonna do is I'm using that paper piercing tool attachment just to help these arthritic hands. I'm gonna move that paper backing from here. Oh yeah, easier said than done today, right? This is like a Monday disguised as a Wednesday. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, let's try it this way. All right, come on, there we go. This one's really giving me a fit. <laughs> All right, you know what? I always say, there's always a way, a method to my madness. Look at this. I think I must have cut it too far. It's not sticking right. All right. Well, you know what? I always say craft is an art. It's not a science. So you know what? Sometimes you just have to adapt. There comes that perfect little precision tip glue applicator again. Gosh, the same thing on this one. I'm looking at this. Maybe I cut it too far to the edge. Well, I will tell you on all the cards I've made, it's worked like a champ. It figures that you're watching and it's not going to work, right? Copy your roof line. You see the point? That's going to mimic here. And then all you're going to do is you're going to tack that in place. Now I used liquid glue on there because my paper wouldn't come off. But there we go. You've got that elevator roof, which gives it a more realistic look. All right, but let's talk about the trees. And then I can't wait to show you what I did with the glimmer paper. We're going to put the card together and I've got those six other samples for you. All right, so I've got tree one, tree two, and tree three. Decide on your elevations, and once you have an idea where you want them, then you can start adhering them. Just for the sake of time, we're going to use a little bit of a tab of my glue, and I'm going to tuck that behind my glue bank here, or my snow bank, and then I'm going to take another one, and let's add a little bit more here. I just want a tiny, tiny bit, and then this is going to go down here. Now, I want my trees staggered. I don't want one in front of the other, so I'm going to move this one over a little bit more by the window. And then this one, I'm gonna put on the other side. I love odd numbers. It really is appealing to the eye. So don't be afraid to do a couple extras, especially when there's multiple dies inside the package, right? Do you remember we talked about this amazing die for the fence? Well, I couldn't help myself. It's a holiday card and I thought it needed more sparkle. This beautiful ombre glimmer paper is from the In Color Packet. There's five colors in there, and the reason I love it is not only does it match our ink, but it can also be adapted to other colors as well. So you can see it's darker at the bottom, becomes lighter here at the top, and I will give Stampin' Up! big props. How many glimmer papers have you used and not had a huge mess? This is fantastic. So I did do the die cutting ahead of time just to save a little bit of time. And I opted for the lighter color on this one on purpose. And the reason is I didn't want to take away from the house itself. I die cut the whole thing easy peasy because I can use the rest for another card. Now you might be looking at this thinking, how the heck are you going to adhere that? Now there's two ways. You can use the adhesive sheets, which means you would put it on there, die cut it, and then you'd peel off the backing. But I'm going to be honest with you. With these arthritic old hands, I struggled. So I am just gonna go back to my precision glue applicator. I'm just wiping off that tip. I'm gonna shake my glue down. Right here along the bottom is where we're gonna place our glue. So just a nice little fine line. I know you can't even see it. That's how small it's coming out. I'm gonna place a little drop right here across the top every once in a while to kind of hold the top portion down. We are going to line this up at the very bottom and we're gonna come across and we're gonna stick it down. This is going to stick for about a second or so, so we can make some contact here. I'm going to move that off to the side, and I'm going to talk to you about the inside of that little card. Now, I did do this ahead of time, again, just to save a little bit of time, because we want to see all those other samples, don't we? That greeting came from Framed and Festive, and I have fallen in love with this. This is a limited edition product. It is only available while supplies last until January 4th of 2023, and then it's gone. There's a promotion called Fitting Florets Collection. So there's this designer paper and some gold swirl embellishments that are limited edition. There's also a sister stamp set 
with dyes that have a floral and oval theme that will be in the new mini catalog in early January. But this is limited edition. I love this font. I think it's striking and it works great for your cards. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and just ready this while my glue is drying. I'm going to add a little adhesive to the back side. Remember, nothing is going to stick to my silicone craft sheet. I'm going to open this up. I could have used a little bit more glue there. And then I'm going to use my sticky scissors and we're going to cut away what we don't need. Okay, I'm going to save this for another card. So now we have the front done. Let's go ahead and open this up and let's move this to the inside. Now you might be thinking just gingerbread houses. Mm -mm. There's a lot of uses for this. Let's put these pieces together to complete our cards. So let's flip that upside down and we're going to use our adhesive again. I will tell you, I tend to be a little bit more generous when I'm layering card on top of card for a simple fun fold like this because I want to make sure that it stays. Again, going sideways, making sure my crease is in the right place. This way I can look to align it as even as possible, top, bottom, and sides, and then we're going to press. Now, I'm going to do this to make sure we've got good contact. I don't want to rub my hand over all those pretty little images here. So there we go. We have our real simple fun fold with that beautiful vellum foil and that kissing technique. Just think of all the designs you can put on top of here. You're going to love that. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way because you want to see these other six cards. Now these six cards I'm going to share with you are all part of this month's online card class that starts today. It's only a four or four day ordering period. It uses this bundle. Okay, remember I took some dies out. But you might be thinking just Christmas, like I said, and no, it's not. Okay, so here's the first one. There are three fun folds and there are three card layouts as part of my online card making class. Now, the best part about my online card making class is you're going to get a video to stamp right along with me from home. So there's no guesswork. You can stop and start at your own pace. Look at that. Oh, do I have tips for you in the video? You're going to absolutely love, love, love this. So this is card number one. If you love shaker cards, you're going to love this one as well. Super easy and the video makes it easy to, for you to follow along. But guess what? Maybe you're a visual learner, which means you like to read instructions. So I have you covered there as well. I have a 20 page PDF tutorial that includes multiple pictures, cutting dimensions and supplies and step by step instructions for all these six cards as well. So that's the second fun fold. Here is your third fun fold. Remember, these are Christmas. So this comes up. And then these come out. Oh, great use of your designer series paper scraps too. Now there's a complete list of all the supplies I used over on my website. You'll click online classes and you'll see online card class. But please keep in mind, you can use whatever you have at home and substitute with the products you already own. Now to enjoy my online card class, there are a couple things you need to know. We do require a $50 product order before shipping and tax using my exclusive card class house code. And I'll share that with you in a minute. So not Christmas at all, is it? This paper is part of that limited edition designer series paper I talked to you about with this stamp set. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get your hands on that paper too. It's absolutely stunning. Okay, here is the other card layout. Oh, so yes, how about welcome to the neighborhood or for someone who's moving or how about announcing a new address? Great card for that. And last but not least, so you're gonna get these five. I've got one more, this will make the six card. Okay, I just couldn't help myself. Um, we have a, an inside joke here in the family. Actually, one year Gina, when she was young, went as the house from up for Halloween one year. And on the way home, the entire house and all the helium balloons went up out of the bed of the trick, pickup truck on the way home. All the work that my husband and I put into that costume was only for that one night, <laughs> but there you go. So these are the six cards for card class. I wanna share more with you about that. This is what's going to be in your project sheet, cutting dimensions and supplies for sure. Now, this is the card class host code. So it's a $50 product order using this code. Again, it's four days only. Today, November 9th through Saturday, November 12th. However, if you're like me and your wish list is long and your order comes to $150 in product or more before shipping and tax, 
don't use the host code. The reason is, is because Stampin' Up's gonna give you additional rewards, which is free product. But I need to know by you contacting me to let me know that order is for card class. Otherwise I have no way of knowing since you didn't use the host code. So all you have to do is drop me an email. Just go over to my website and click on contact and just say, hey Lisa, that order I just placed, it's for card class. I want the video and the PDF tutorial for those six cards and I'll be happy to send that to you. Now, perhaps you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, or perhaps you don't care so much about the video. So I have just the PDF tutorial, no video for sale. It is over on my website under Online Classes PDF Tutorial Library. I only charge $1 per page, and that's gonna get you the pictures, cutting dimensions, supplies, and step-by-step -step instructions for all six of those cards. And it's an immediate purchase and download in case you're interested there. Of course, I would love to have you join me. I want to tell you right now, we're gonna do a live Q&A in less than five minutes. So if you have a question, put a Q and a colon and then start typing your question in. I'm gonna do that in just a few minutes. Now, before you go, there's a couple things you need to know. I wanna give you the live date for the next live stream. I'll be here with you on my YouTube channel. But I also wanna entice you to head over to my website. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the word subscribe very big there. And I would love for you to do so because I'm going to send you a free PDF tutorial via email every Thursday. It is no frills. It's a project that I don't share on any of my other platforms and I would absolutely love to include you. And then you can check out my website for lots of other inspiration while you're there. Okay. The next live stream is actually just days away. It's going to be on Monday. I have to actually look at my calendar. It's November 14th already. It's hard to believe we are just two weeks from Thanksgiving as of tomorrow, but you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. I have some real fun things in store for us as we near the holidays, and they're gonna be quick and easy and impressive, and I would love to have you join me. We'll be right here on my YouTube channel at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Monday in just a few days, November 4th. If you're going to leave us now and not stay for the Q&A, I just want to thank you for joining me, and I look forward to having you join me on Monday. For those of you staying with the live Q&A, go ahead and type the Q and your question now. I'm going to be very informal and reach over for my computer mouse so I can sort through this and get your questions pulled up here on the screen so that I can answer them for you. All right, so let me push those cards out of the way, grab my computer mouse, and let me just type in that Q up here so that I can kind of try to find your questions. Okay, I'm looking. Bear with me here one second. Like I told you, this is the informal part, right? When Jean is here usually with me, it makes it a lot easier. All right, keep in mind there's a delay between when I speak and when you hear it and when you type and when I see it. Okay, um, here's a question from Brana. She is asking, is it possible to emboss galled cardstock sentiments? The answer is yes. As a matter of fact, Brana, I believe last week someone had asked me a very similar question. Use the embossing buddy. That was that little powder bag we talked about on the gold cardstock and then Versamark and then your embossing powder. The most important tip I can tell you is do not overheat the gold cardstock because the foil will tend to kind of ripple and then of course, then it's not gonna look embossed, it's gonna look scorched, okay? But experiment on some scraps, you absolutely can. Can you imagine silver embossing on gold foil? Oof, stunning, isn't it? All right, um, I'm looking for some other questions. And Kathy has a question. What is the name of the vellum you used? Isn't it beautiful? It's called Snowflake Specialty Vellum. So if you go to my online store through my website, just click on shop, and you'll be able to type in snowflake vellum. It'll come right up. The word specialty just means it's got some special elements of the flocking and the iridescent foil in it. It's beautiful. You will not be disappointed. Um, okay, so I have another question here from Mary Ellen. Question already asked my question about the embossing powder. Okay, so I just want to make sure that you didn't get missed there. All right. And then Jewel said, do you ever use stamp and write markers on your cards? You know what, Jewel? That's an excellent question. I do, but rarely. I fell in love with the alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers because they make me look like a professional when I color. But we don't have them in every single color. So Blushing Bride is a perfect example. So I'll use the marker when I'm coloring in that specific color. So yes, I don't use them that often, but yes, I do use them. And I'll tell you why I have them all. 
because you actually can use the marker directly on the stamp. So let's say you have one image and you want two colors. So for instance, maybe you have the word Merry Christmas and you want Merry in red and Christmas in green. You can flip the stamp over and use the red marker on Merry and the green marker on Christmas and get two tones. You cannot use alcohol-based markers on your stamps. I never recommend that because that's a permanent ink. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, all right, that was a really good question. Mary has a question. Mary, let's bring you up here. Um, I have an ink pad that sticks when I try to open it, and then when I close it, I have to press really hard. Is there a trick? Ooh, well, it shouldn't do that. Mary, I'm assuming you're talking about a Stampin' Up! ink pad. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna flip you down here. Let me move all this fancy stuff out of the way. Let's talk about ink pad real quick. Okay, this is just early espresso. Ooh, I think my camera might be upside down. Um, we just installed a new hot button, as you can see. <laughs> and that didn't work out real good. I'm gonna have to fix that. So here we go, I'm just using my mouse. So if you have a Stampin' Up! ink pad, there's a little latch right here. So you're gonna pull up, you're gonna open it up all the way. Then you are going to slide until it clicks. This should be flush. The little area here is for your fingers to pull forward. That releases the lid, and then you should be able to close it. If you're having difficulty, it's probably because you don't have it open all the way before you're trying to close it or before you're trying to slide it. So that's really, really important. I hope that helps answer your question because I, I think that's what you're referring to. If not, you know what? Contact me through my website. I'll be happy to answer that for you. Um, uh, okay, Katie has a question and she says, this doesn't pertain to cards. They were beautiful and cute. Oh, I'm so glad you like them. I'd love to know where what you use to keep and separate your papers. Oh, you see it behind me? I have to forget, this is a mirrored image. If you go over to my website and you click on Shop Craft Room Favorites, I have those dividers in there. They fit right into my IKEA Calyx unit. I also have the clear sleeves that I store all of my designer series paper in. Love it, they are a game changer. You're gonna buy them once and you will thank me. I'll do one more question and then we'll be done for tonight. Um, okay, I'm looking for a question I haven't already answered. And Roxana has a question. Have you demonstrated the soft pastels? Sure did. I did a whole video with lots of different ways to use them. If you're looking for an idea and you're not sure if I've done a video on it, really easy. When you're on YouTube, you can just type in Lisa Curcio or Lisa Stamp Studio and one keyword. So in this case, it would be Lisa Stamp Studio or Lisa Curcio pastels. And then all those videos will pop up and you can watch the one that you'd like. Or if you're here on my channel, there's a separate search icon and you don't have to type in my name and just type in pastels and you'll be able to find those. All right, that's it for tonight. I hope that you'll all have a wonderful rest of your week and I look forward to having you join me live on Monday when I'll be back with another amazing project for you. Have a blessed evening.